Welcome to my lecture online. On this next problem from the JE advanced test, well, it actually is a doable problem and you might be able to do this one in three minutes. Let's see. Now there's one word of caution. Notice that if you read the four statements, the first two, sta the first two statements deal with the electric field and the last two statements deal with the potential. So make sure you realize that when you read it. So do you have to pay attention to the way the questions are answered or are, are asked? We have six charges that are placed around the regular hexagon of side length A as shown. So I guess I should show one of the sides has length A and since it's a hexagon all sides have length A. Five of them have charge Q and the remaining one has charge X. So you can see that one, two, three, four, five have charge Q and the last one has charge X. That's the unknown charge. The perpendicular from each charge to the nearest hexagon side passes through the center of O of the hexagon and is bisected by the side. So notice that if you draw a line from the center of the hexagon to the charge, you go right through the middle of each of the six sides and the length of the, this half is exactly the same length as that half. So they want to make sure you understand that. Then we have four statements that you need to determine which of the four are correct. So the first two deal with the electric field. When x equals q, the magnitude of the electric field at O is zero. When x equals negative q, the magnitude of the electric field at O is q over 6 pi epsilon sub naught a squared. When x equals 2q, the potential at O is 7q divided by 4 times the square root of 3 pi epsilon sub naught a. And when x equals negative 3q, the potential at O is 3q divided by 4 times the square root of 3 pi epsilon sub naught a. So this is actually not that difficult of a problem. You can actually probably do this one in three minutes. You just need to remember the, three, the two equations that the electric field is equal to kq divided by the distance squared. Now that would be the electric field for each one. And this is the magnitude of the field is equal to that. And for the potential, the voltage is equal to kq over r. Now, of course, we do need to realize that with the electric field, direction is important. Now, if we set x equals to q, if this one becomes q, and so let me use a red color here, if this one becomes q, notice the perfect symmetry. The electric field will emanate away from each charge towards the center here, and notice the magnitude caused by each of the six charges will be exactly the same when it gets there, and notice that whenever we have two opposing charges like that, the direction is, the magnitude is equal, but the direction is opposite, so in pairs they will cancel each other out, and therefore, if all the charges have charge Q, then they will, the electric field will cancel out at O, and therefore the first statement is indeed correct. The electric field there will be zero, so that is a correct statement. What happens now when x becomes negative q? Well, we still have this pair will, will cancel out, and this pair which will cancel out, but now these two charges will cause an electric field in the same direction. Notice that for a positive charge, the electric field is toward, is away from the charge and here the electric field is towards the charge. So you can see that they both are in the same direction so they're additive in this case. So what we need to do is find the electric field caused by one of the charges and then double it for the two charges. And so now we need to know the distance. And let's see, if this is A, notice we can draw a triangle like this. That means that each of the angle is going to be 60 degrees. Hey, that kind of reminds me of the, pre the previous problem here. We have an equilateral triangle. We'll have six of those in the hexagon. That means that each of the sides is length A. So this is A, this is A, this is A. And this here will be a 30 degree angle. So you can see that the length here, uh, if this is the hypotenuse, the length, this is 30 degrees. That would be the adjacent side of 30 or the opposite side of 60. We could say here that the uh, cosine of 30 degrees is equal to the ratio of the adjacent side, which is, mm, let's call this side y, let's call this distance y, divided by the hypotenuse, which is a. 
And the cosine of 30, that's equal to the square root of 3 over 2. So this can say the square root of 3 over 2 times a is equal to y. So this distance is y, but the total distance would be 2y. So 2y is equal to twice that, or the square root of 3 times a. So we know then that the distance from every charge to the center of the, of the hexagon is equal to the square root of 3 times a. So now we can say that the electric field for one of them is equal to k, which is 1 over 4 pi epsilon sub naught, times the charge, which is uh, q, right? So times q, and divided by the distance squared. Now the distance is squared at 3a squared, so this would be 3a squared. So that's for one of them. 2 times the electric field of 1, that's, that would be twice as much, that would be 2 uh, q over 4 pi epsilon sub naught 3 a squared. Of course, the 2 and the 4 cancel, and 2 times 3 is 6, so this would be q divided by 6 pi epsilon sub naught a squared. And now we can go look to see if that's the same as what we have over here. And notice when x equals negative q, the magnitude of the electric field should be q over 6 pi epsilon sub naught a squared. That matches our answer, so we know that this is also a correct statement. All right, now for B of C and D, we need to shift to the different equation. We need to shift to this equation right here, and the first thing we're going to do is let x equals 2q. Now, notice, so now we get rid of that, so now it's 2q, 2q like that. That's a terrible looking q, all right? Uh, now with potential or voltage, we don't need to worry about directions. We simply need to add algebraically all the charges. Since they are equidistant, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 times q plus 2q or 7q. So the total charge is 7q at a distance of the square root of 3a away from the, from the uh, center of the hexagon. So therefore, the voltage for all 7 is equal to k, which is 1 over 4 pi epsilon sub naught times 7q, there's 7 charges total, divided by the square root of 3 times a. And so, let's see here, uh, that's 7q divided by 4 times the square root of 3 pi epsilon sub naught a, and that's exactly what we have over here. So, we know that if x equals 2q, total charge is 7q, we get the same answer, so we know that c is correct as well. Finally, now we shift to the last a value for x. Now we're going to make it minus 3q. Alright, that means we now have a total of five positive charges and three negative charges for a total of two positive charges, com uh, two positive charges combined. So now we can say that uh, v for two positive charges is going to be equal to k, which is 1 over 4 pi epsilon sub naught, times the two charges divided by the distance, which is going to be uh, the square root of 3 times a. Again, the 2 and the 4 cancel, so now we end up with v for the two charges is equal to q in the numerator, divided by 2 times the square root of 3 pi epsilon sub naught a. And let's check to see that's the same that we have over here. You can see that's not the same value over here, which means that this answer is not correct. So therefore, A, B, and C are correct, and D is not. And I think it took a little bit more than three minutes, but if you don't talk so much as I did, <laughs> just work it out, you could possibly do it in three minutes. So how long did we take? You took. <laughs> Eight minutes. Yeah, but skip all the talking. That brings it down to three oh, minutes. Yeah, that's 30 seconds. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you still have to work very fast to get this done in three minutes, but notice we just need to deal with the two equations, the equation for the magnitude electric field and the equation for the voltage, and so you can actually reason this out fairly quickly.